Amen. Jesus is truly our joy and He's our peace and our righteousness. We've been talking a couple of things on joy, how the Bible talks about joy. And we also mentioned that Jesus is our joy. Jesus is our source of joy. And a good acronym to remember where our source of joy is from J-O-Y, we can say Jesus overflowing you. Jesus is the source of your joy. Mm. And uh, we also talked about how certain people in the Bible, they encouraged themselves in the Lord. And, that, and that's where their strength was from. They started encouraging themselves by singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and praising and worshiping God. And things were turning around and things did eventually turn around and they won the battles, they won victories mm. because, um, because of Jesus, their source of joy. Yeah, you know, the joy of the Lord in you, it can be an encouragement to somebody else. Yeah. You know, if somebody's discouraged and doesn't have any joy and they're that's all true. sad, the joy of the Lord that is inside of you can be an encouragement to somebody else. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we see that in Paul's life. You know, he's the one who wrote about, I will rejoice in the Lord my God. Mm. And the joy that he was walking in was such an encouragement to so many others. Mm. Because, you know, there was, there's one place where many others were bold enough to, to share the gospel because they, they were looking at Paul's life, even though he was in prison and he was, um, you, know, you know, writing letters in prison and, um, you know, all lonely out there. But still, he was still, you know, meditating on the word of God and writing mm. these letters. And it was encouraging to so many other people. Yeah, in fact, in one place, he talks about all these afflictions and these persecutions. And he says, these are light afflictions. Mm. I mean, a person like Paul, the things that he faced and experienced, how could he say all these are light afflictions? Yeah. Because he knew where his source of joy was coming from. He knew it was not coming from the circumstances around him, but he knew his source of joy was Jesus. And that's why he could even say, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Mm. And he, in, in another place, he says to write these things to you is not grievous for me, but it's advantageous for you. So 
quit worrying about the things that you're facing in life and maybe it's difficult some of the things that you're going through but I guarantee you if you start using joy in your life start rejoicing by faith yeah you are gonna come out more victorious than any if you just complain and grumble so joy is a good thing I wrote down a couple of reasons to rejoice and these are taken from the Bible and the first one is from Psalm Psalm 5 verse 11 it says let all those that put their trust in the Lord rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let them also that love your name be joyful in you. Now this scripture gives us three reasons why we can rejoice. The first one is because we trust in the Lord. See, if you trust and you say, Lord, I believe that you are going to get me through this situation, then you will express it by rejoicing. And you can clap your hands, you can lift your hands and dance to show, you know, how you're rejoicing. And it's not just an outward thing. You can rejoice on the inside, but if it's there on the inside, it's definitely going to come out. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you say, I trust in the Lord, yeah, that He's going to get me through, then you will rejoice. Yeah. And the second one says, um, shout for joy because you defend them. So you shout for joy, you make a loud noise. Like Paul and Silas, when they were in prison, they started praising and worshiping God so loud that the other prisoners heard them. Mm. So you shout for joy because the Lord is your defender. He is for you. The Lord is not against you. Yeah. He is for you. He's yeah, for joy can't you. Yeah. Be, joy can't be inside your heart and you know not expressed just outside. not expressed outside. You know, joy has to be expressed on the outside. You, you, there's nothing wrong with clapping your hands and you know dancing and you know singing aloud to the Lord. Those are all things that God has mentioned in His Word, and He wants yeah. you to be expressive about His joy. Yeah, if, he does. if Paul and Silas were singing softly, none of the other prisoners would have heard them. Mm. But they were singing loud so that the other prisoners would have heard them. Because they yeah. knew the gospel has they hope it. for mm. everyone. And um, the third uh, reason why we can rejoice is it says here, let them also that love your name be joyful. And do you love God's name? Do you love his character? He says, I'm your healer. I'm your provider. In the, in the Old Testament, it talks about the names of the Lord, how he is Jehovah Jireh the Lord my provider, He is Jehovah Sikinu, my righteousness. And all these different names, He's uh, Jehovah Rea, the Lord my shepherd. Those are His names and His names represent His character, who He is to mm. us. And so because you love His name, because you know that He's for you, you are going to rejoice, be joyful in the Lord. Another reason that we can rejoice is uh, because Jesus said in Luke ten twenty, rejoice because your name is written in heaven. When you receive Jesus and make Him Lord of your life, He writes your name in heaven. And that's a wonderful thing to rejoice about. And He says, um, in another place, He says, no man can pluck you out of my hands. Mm. So you can rejoice because of these things. Yeah. So you don't have to be afraid, you know, when thoughts come into your mind, maybe your salvation wasn't real, you know, maybe you're not really saved, maybe God didn't really save you. You can say, no, Jesus promised in His word, He has written my name in His book. And you can rejoice because of that. Actually, by rejoicing, you can overcome a lot of thoughts in your mind mm. that come to steal your joy and come to discourage you and put bad thoughts into your mind. Because it's Satan, you know, he doesn't like when you rejoice. No. He is the opposite. He wants you to be sorrowful and sad and grumpy all the time. But Jesus wants you to rejoice. Mm. So rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Yeah. You can also rejoice when another person gets saved. When another person comes into the family of God, you can rejoice and share in the joy with them. Yeah, and you know, if joy is something that um, it doesn't come naturally for you and you haven't been rejoicing in a long time, you can take reminders of scripture that um, remind you of the joy of the Lord yeah. and keep them in front of you. You know, nowadays we have reminders on our phones and just to remind ourselves of, um, you know, I got to do this, I got to do that and to-do lists that we make. Now you can make this, you know, joy can be something that you can make as a reminder to mm. um, remind yourself to rejoice in the Lord at all times. And, and here are some really good scriptures that you can use to remind yourself to rejoice in the Lord. Um, Psalm 149, a couple of scriptures there, verse 1, 2 and 5, it says, Praise the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song Amen. and His praise in the congregation of the saints. Yeah. Let Israel rejoice in Him that made Him. And you know what, you can say that, you know, I'm going to rejoice in Him just as much as Israel rejoices, I can rejoice too. Yeah. And let the children of Zion be joyful in their King. Mm. Let the saints 
be joyful in glory. Yeah. I can be joyful in glory. And then it says, and this part is really interesting, it says, let them sing aloud upon their beds. Amen. So you can say, God, I'm going to sing aloud upon my bed. Yeah. I'm going to be joyful in you. Yeah. And that's another, yeah, that's a good sing. place to do. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes when you go to bed, you feel weary and tired. Immediately you can just begin to sing a song of praise and, and yeah. joy. It just come out of you as you start yeah. rejoicing. You know, and another scripture, we read this before, but you can personalize this scripture also. It says, these things, Jesus said, I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In mm -hmm. the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Yeah. I have overcome the world. That's right. And so you can remind yourself and tell yourself, Jesus, if you overcame the world, that means I can overcome the world too. Amen. That can be a good reminder. So yeah. the Psalms are really good places, uh, a good place to, you know, for you to start reminding yourself to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice and, in the Lord. Yeah. And, yeah. And the other places you can take a scripture like John 16, 33 and remember that if Jesus overcame the world, you can overcome the world and put them as reminders. You know, if you want to make them like posters around your, in your yeah, room or, you know, something like that on your phone, remind yourself to rejoice mm. and that will bring the joy out of you. Yeah. In First Peter 1, 8, we're getting into a couple of scriptures because this is, you know, Jesus said, your source of joy is his word. Yeah. These things I speak unto you that your joy may be full. So we're taking a couple of scriptures to show you that in the word of God, truly you can have joy. Yeah. In 1 Peter 1, 8, it says, whom having not seen, that is Jesus, whom having not seen you love, in whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Mm. Even though we don't see Jesus in the physical right now, we know He is with us. We know His Spirit abides on the inside of us. And that's why it says here, though now you see Him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable. Because you believe in Jesus, you can have joy, abundant joy. It says here, joy unspeakable. Sometimes you cannot say even enough words to thank God for who He is and His goodness, but you can just express it to Him in your, in your worship by singing songs, by lifting your hands and just thinking upon His goodness, joy mm. unspeakable. Yeah. yeah, and last time we saw about how joy restores strength into your body. And we took two examples of Nehemiah, how he, when he was building the walls and opposition came against him, he said, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord and that joy is going to be my strength. Yeah. And then the other example that we took was Habakkuk. When he had his fields were dead and dry, nothing was producing, he immediately said, I will rejoice in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that joy is going to restore strength into my body. My feet are going to be like Heinz feet. Yeah. That's what joy is going to do into my life. And, uh, you know, there's another really good benefit of joy. We see that in Proverbs 17, 22. Um, this is what it says. Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart does good like a medicine, Amen. but a broken spirit dries the bones. Yeah. I mean, that's really amazing. There. There's another version of this same scripture in another, uh, the same scripture in another version. It says, a happy heart is good medicine and a cheerful mind works healing, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. Mm. A happy heart or a joyful heart, more than happiness, it's joy really, joy that comes from within you. A joyful heart is good medicine. It's like taking in medicine, cure for your body. And a cheerful mind works healing. Mm. Wow, how many of us need healing in our minds, restoration in our minds? But a broken spirit, always sad and sorrowful and feeling low and condemned all the time, dries up your bones mm. and you don't want that to happen to you. And so take joy as medicine into your body. Be joyful. It's a good thing to laugh, you know, make yourself happy. Yeah. Even for little silly things, you just laugh. Don't make yourself serious. Yeah. It's a good thing to laugh. A happy heart is good medicine. You want medicine, you want cure for your body, laugh. Yeah. Have a joyful time. And so uh, we don't need to have a broken spirit that will dry up our bones. Mm. If you're feeling guilty and condemned, come out of that. Be free from all that. Because Jesus Christ has set you free from guilt and condemnation and from sorrow. And another good scripture in Proverbs 15, 13, it's another benefit of joy. It says, a merry heart or a joyful heart makes a cheerful countenance. It cheers up your face, cheers up your countenance. 
But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Mm. When you're sorrowful on the inside, it can be seen in your face. That's true. But when you have joy, a joyful heart from the inside, when you truly rejoice for who Jesus is to you, mm. for what he has done for you, for salvation itself, you will have a cheerful countenance. People will be able to see it from your face yeah. that you're joyful. And you know, Jesus is our best example of joy. When you see Jesus, when he faced the cross, there was nothing joyful about the cross. But Jesus was not rejoicing in the cross itself, but he was rejoicing in what that work was going to do in the bringing victory. the victory of that cross. It was going to bring sons into the family of God. Yeah. That's why Jesus rejoiced. And we find that um, scripture in Hebrews 12.3, um, Hebrews 12, there's a couple of amazing verses in the beginning of Hebrews 12. See, Jesus is your best example of joy. Mm. Jesus is not sad and he's not up there in heaven with a, with a mournful face no. or with some kind of a grumpy face. And His looking, presence is yeah, full of joy. His presence is full of joy. That's what the Bible tells us. His presence, there is fullness of joy. And when you are in the presence of Jesus, you don't have to be sad. Mm. You know, there's so much of joy. Yeah. And so when you read, uh, let's read Hebrews 12 uh, verse 2. Now see, Jesus is our example. Verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God. Right hand of the mm. throne of God. See, Jesus, when he was... Um, before he went to the cross. See, he knew that this work was going to, um, it was a big work that was going to take place. Yeah. The, the work on the cross was going to destroy the power of death. Purchased and, our redemption. Yeah, purchased our redemption. And the work on the cross was going to bring healing for our body and take away sin yeah. and sickness and poverty and all those things. That's what, that's what Jesus did on the cross. Yeah. And so that's why Jesus was looking at the joy beyond the cross is that the work that he would do would bring sons into the family of God. That's it would, amazing. Yeah, just think about it. Jesus was looking beyond the cross. Yeah. See, there was nothing beautiful about Jesus on the cross. When he was hanging up there on the cross, you know, people, it says in the scriptures that you couldn't even recognize that he was a man, right? He, mm. was, he was so marred completely. His image was completely distorted. But you see, he did that because he loved us so much. And because he wanted you back into the family of God. Yeah. You see, what happened to us in the beginning was, you know, Adam, when he, when he made a mistake, you know, right in the start, we see that it affected the whole human race. But Jesus, when he died on the cross, it took care of all what Adam had done. Yeah. And, and yeah. You know, just thinking of all that, what Jesus has done for us. If Jesus went through, he endured the cross to see the joy that was set before him. And it's kind of like despising the work of Jesus when we are sorrowful, mm. when we are sad all the time, because he wants us to be joyful in the work that he accomplished for right. us. He went through a horrible price, the cross, and he wants us to be joyful. You know, just imagine you pay a price and you give a gift to somebody. Do you want to see them sad all the time and being so upset and so condemned all the time? No, when you give them a gift, you want to see them happy about it. You want mm. to see them joyful and just jumping up and down and saying, thank you so much. You know, I think Jesus wants us to see it, wants to see us more joyful. Yeah. He wants us to thank him for the good things that he's done through the cross yeah. for us. And when you spend time in his word, you just spend time with him, enjoying his presence. Don't wait yeah. just to finish off reading. Enjoy Jesus because mm. in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Yeah, like that song said, I will abide in you and let your words abide yeah. in me. Yeah, and if you have lost the joy of your salvation, you can pray this prayer with us. We're going to pray as we close the program. And let this, let this word encourage you and let it bring back the joy on the inside of you. Let's pray. Let's say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe, I believe you died on the cross for me. You died on the cross for to me. To restore me. To restore me. Back to God. Back to God. I invite you as Lord and Savior. I invite you as Lord and Savior. Come and live on the inside of me. Come and live on the inside Wash of me. Wash me of all my sin. Wash me of all my sin. And cleanse me. And cleanse me. I make you Lord and Savior. I make you Lord and Savior. Thank you for giving me a new reason to live. Thank you for giving me a new reason to live. Thank Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your joy. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, 
can believe that Jesus has come to live in your heart and you can enjoy life all the days of your life.